talking about the green Lexus because this my uh, story in my heart has to do with that too. Um, so one, we were at Carborough High School and Julian said to me, look, uh, my dad has these basketball tickets, or his friend from work has these basketball tickets. The only thing is we gotta go pick them up. I was like, okay, great, let's do it. So we jump in the green Lexus after school and we're in such a hurry that he slightly uh, tapped the back of Maria Ramana's car uh, in the green Lexus. And so we pull over and we're like, yeah, thank God, nothing bad happened. Like, totally fine. And so we're on the highway driving to go pick up these tickets and uh, Don't Stop Believing comes on and Julian cranks it up, windows are down. And all of a sudden the hood flies up and smashes the windshield. So both of us have our head out the window on the I 40. And we get to uh, the repair shop, and I knew two things. One, we're not going to the basketball game. And two, your mom's going to kill us. <laughs> She didn't, but uh, that uh, every time I hear that song now, uh, <laughs> it will always remind me of that. Um, and so, I just want to say so when I get to the body shop, I am so thankful they're alive. Yes. <laughs> so mad. There's uh, different different kinds of virtues in life. Um, resume virtues are things like income and job title and the size of your house. Um, the eulogy virtues are things like being helpful, being loved, loving in return, and being remembered. Uh, and irony is that many people aspire for the latter, but put all of their effort into the former. <laughs> um, luckily for us, Julian gave us a lot of eulogy virtues. Everything about Julian was big, big laugh, big shoulders, big smile. He had an outsized personality, and the only thing bigger than his ego was his heart. <laughs> I know Julian is so proud to see us all here in one of our favorite places with all of his favorite people. I use the present tense because I believe that everyone experiences two deaths eventually. Once when they die, and another when their name is spoken for the last time. <laughs> but I know between myself and all of you that he'll live on for many years to come. Flipping through photos of Julian and noticing one undeniable thing in every single photo. Julian is such a bright light. He had such an effect on people when he walked into a room. There was something magnetic about his depth and his warmth and his seemingly... I remember... 15-year-old Julian walking down the halls of Chapel Hill High, and what I remember most is how shiny his head of blonde hair was even back then. <laughs> and while writing this, I was overwhelmed with memories. It was like my heart cycled through all the times we spent together. And I've been struck how even the smaller moments and the snapshots in time have come back to me. Like how when I would get into his car, he would play a song he knew I didn't like him <laughs> and turn it up even louder and say things like, come on, how could you not like it? It's so good. <laughs> and then he would do his kind of goofy high pitch chuckle. <laughs> Julian also knew the heart of things. One memory that's been really alive for me is how he asked me to our high school prom. He sent a photo to Miss Erickson, now Catherine. <laughs> A photo of himself wearing a shirt that said prom question mark. And somehow, he created a plan with our teacher to project that photo onto the whiteboard in the middle of class. Oh. Completely humiliating me. And when, <laughs> and when I turned to look at him, he was just sitting there with his smile wearing the shirt. <laughs> I was so bright red and completely embarrassed. And the thing that I remember now about that moment is that I find loving in that 
always so deep and so complex, like the kind where you know exactly how to love someone, even when they don't want to admit they want to be loved that way. To this day, Julian's heart is radiating and still giving. I haven't felt my heart open this wide in such a long time, and it's as if I have Julian's light still. I don't want to have like a overall message here, just kind of a few few anecdotes that I'll I'll offer. Um, I mean, this this time of year was right when like lacrosse season was uh, was kind of starting up, and uh, as it's been mentioned, Julian was an athletic freak, um, <laughs> especially once like junior year in high school rolled around and just had the ability to, you know, anything that required any sort of coordination or athletic ability, Julian unfairly was instantly the best person in any room or gymnasium or field. Um, to a lot of our envy, I think. Um, and yeah, I mean, just impressive at everything he did. I, I know we have a, a few few games out there, probably some cornhole. Um, so hope everyone can enjoy that later. And uh, Julian, I think you're finally gonna let me win a game of cornhole. Because <laughs> The only, the only way I was winning is if Julian was on my team. So, um, uh, the next thing is, I, I think people in this room will probably, some people will probably be able to relate to is, uh, Julian loved like a petty little argument. <laughs> uh, and like, just back and forth, being able to like pick at each other. And he like, he knew what to say to you even if he was completely off base, and you knew what you knew what to say to him that would just like get under his skin. Uh, you know, whether it was, you know, obviously arguing was LeBron the goat, or you know, whatever, whatever it might be. That, that was like a legitimate argument, but uh, I guess what I'm getting at is things like um, one day in the kitchen, this is when we were living together, and uh, Julian was a great cook, by the way. He loved grilling. Uh, grilled chicken breasts and grilled potato wedges. That was like his thing, come, come home and Julian was grilling. Um, but I had the audacity to say something along the lines of, you know, paprika doesn't really taste like anything. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Julian was like, what are you talking about? You're an idiot. <laughs> And so we, we argued about paprika in the kitchen for a while. I mean, like, who knew someone could feel so strongly about paprika? I don't, is that a Ukrainian thing? <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it was things like that. that. That was the best example I could think of, it was, a, it was a paprika argument. Um, I still stand by my it's not, It doesn't add all that much. Um, lastly, or not, not lastly, but I, I also have a, a prom story, um, which I guess would have been junior year probably. And uh, there was this girl that I had been uh, talking with in math class. And, uh, you know, we both pretty obviously were into each other. And uh, I was delaying the inevitable that we both knew of like asking her to prom. And it was like getting close. And she was like, I think getting worried, but like not actually worried. <laughs> and Julian was just as good friends with me as uh, he was this girl I was talking to. And uh, so like one day after school, he was like, dude, what are you waiting for? Like, hurry up and ask her. Um, and he was right, and like I was just putting it off. Or I, I don't know.